Dr. Tiffany M. Lloyd, host of Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff, broadcasting live each week on Saturdays at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time from Fishbowl Radio Network Studios at Globe Life Park in Arlington, Texas. Tune in to hear how we will be unpacking issues in our society, aligning with the teachings of Christ. So be sure to log on each week on Saturdays at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time to catch Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff. Follow me on Facebook at Dr. Tiffany M. Lloyd, Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff on FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. Ladies and gentlemen, hi, this is Dr. Tiffany M. Lloyd, and you are listening to Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff. I am so happy that you are joining with me today. I'm sorry about the little bit of delay, had a little bit of technical issues, but God is still good. Thank you so much for tuning in all across uh, the country, all across the world. Thank you. Please like and share. We have a powerful, powerful show on today. It's my birthday celebration edition with Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff. And so I am so grateful and so humbled and so honored that you are with me. And let's start off with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, you are so great and so worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Lord, we just give you praise. Lord, if you don't do anything else for us, we still have more than enough to be grateful for. God, I'm so grateful for everyone that is under the sound of my voice. God, you know what their needs are, Lord Jesus. Touch them in a mighty way. Lord Jesus, I thank you for my special guest on today, Ja'Kalen Carr. I pray, God, that you bless her ministry abundantly, Lord Jesus. Use her in a mighty way like you have never used her before. Let her album, Changing Your Story, impact lives. And most importantly, bring people closer to you. Let people know, God, that you are not an average God, and therefore we are not called to be average people. God, I pray, God, that you will anoint every word that comes out of me in Evangelist Carr mouth. Bless it in a mighty way. Have your way right now in the mighty name of Jesus. and your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am Amen. so grateful. You know, tomorrow I'll be celebrating another birthday and I'm so grateful. Ja'Kalen Carr's album, Changing Your Story, has already blessed me. She has a song on the album called Jehovah Jireh. I've already listened to that song at least six times today. And it doesn't matter what you have done in your life. It doesn't matter what people may say about you. It doesn't matter if people have thrown in the towel on you. We serve a God that is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Don't you ever think that whatever you have done is so big that God cannot forgive you. Don't you ever think that there is something in your life that is so big that God will stop loving you. He loves us more than we can ever love ourselves. He takes care of us more, better than we can take care of ourselves. That's just the type of God that we serve. There's a, a, a verse in her, in her song where she talks about if he did it for Abraham, if he rose Lazarus from the dead, don't you know that God can do it for you? And so that is my tip talk for today. Don't you ever think that whatever you have done, that God cannot forgive you. The Bible declares to look to the hills from which cometh your help, for all of your help comes from the Lord. Surrender yourself to God. Cast your cares on God. And I promise you, he will meet you right where you are. And that is my tip talk for today. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we have the beautiful, sensational, striking, vivacious, young, beautiful gospel artist. She is a Grammy-nominated, GMA, uh, Dove Award-winning, Stella Award-winning artist, independent artist. She's an actress. She's an author. She's an entrepreneur. But most importantly, she is on fire for the Lord at such a young age, unapologetically. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome the beautiful evangelist, Ja'Kalen Carr. Hi, Hello. Ja'Kalen. How are you? I'm blessed. How are you? I am so good. Thank you so much from the bottom and top of my heart for hanging out with me and celebrating with me on my birthday, Well, which is tomorrow. I'm getting old, Ja'Kalen, but I am so <laughs> grateful because I got your young blood around me that helps me. Uh, <laughs> no, you're absolutely welcome and happy birthday and you look amazing. This red is, that's your color. Oh, you know, I'm trying <laughs> to be like you, Ja'Kalen. I'm just trying to be like you when I 
<laughs> but Jacayla, let me tell you, I have been a fan of yours, and um, your album has ch blessed my life. And wow. I'm telling you that Jehovah Jireh, I thought that it's yours was my song. It's still my song, but Jehovah Jireh, oh my God, it has blown my mind. First of all, tell us about the album Changing Your Story. Yes, yeah, so um, Changing Your Story, my first love album I recorded outwards. I recorded it in October of last year. Um, God's timing is perfect. And I tell people all the time, it's important to listen and to obey the voice of God. I knew that there was something that God wanted to get uh, out of me to his people. And uh, so God allowed me to be able to record this album and every song uh, on this album, when you listen to it from the beginning to the end, it's Bible. Um, I praise God for the revelation behind it. And one thing I am a firm believer of is putting God's word into our atmosphere because I know that miracle identify with this word and with that being said you know I've been getting so many testimonies of how much it is already blessing God's people and my prayer is that it will continue to take charge of their atmosphere and cultivate their atmosphere so that they can witness God change their lives for the better um, even you mentioned Jehovah Jireh God gave me that song, and that song is talking about people who um, you're in a place of transition. You feel like God is pulling you into a greater place. It's a new season. It's a new opportunities, but it also feels like all odds are against you. It seems as though your faith is being tested, but the Lord told me, he said, I won't give you a word. I won't give you a vision and don't provide for the vision, and so with that being said, you got to trust me in this place to know that even when you don't know how it's going to happen, I'm going to show up, and I'm going to provide everything that you need me to do. And so with that being said, I give God praise for those whose lives are shifting for the better, because I do believe that this is our time and our season where God is doing major. If you have to reposition yourself to blot out the noise and the distractions or the things that you know are going on around you that's been trying to hinder your thought process and keep you from reminding yourself of what God has spoken, do what you have to do because God wants to do major in the lives of his people and I declare that heaven is echoing that in your life because I believe that that is what is happening even now oh wow wow so how long have you been preaching and when did you realize that there was a calling on your life I have been preaching since I was 13 years old. Um, I started singing at the age of five. Um, I always knew that this is what I wanted to do. It was a passion of mine. I remember telling God at a very young age, all I want to do is give your people hope and inspire them through the gifts you've placed in me and the anointing that is upon my life. Um, and although I started singing first, it was the, the preaching that God used to um, catapult everything else in my life. God took me across the world for two years years before my music ministry expanded to the world through the song Greater is Coming and I was 15. Um, and so I just knew that this is what God once wanted, wanted me to be. Um, I walked into it boldly. It was no a hard transition for me because um, I've always just had that outgoing spirit when it comes to operating in my purpose and things like that. But I love it. I wouldn't trade anything that God has allowed me to experience and he's daily doing right. uh, for anything in the world. Right. Now, I have to ask you, do you find it difficult with you, first of all, being young, being a woman and being in ministry? Do you find any challenges with that? For me, um, it wasn't so much, I would say starting out, it wasn't so much of uh, me being a woman. I literally... The true story. Uh, when God called me to preach, um, there was a man of God who brought me to his church and he said, I didn't believe in women preachers at first, but the Holy Spirit that was in you convicted me. The Holy Spirit that was in you, I could not reject it. And he brought me to his ministry. And so that wasn't necessarily a huge problem for me. Um, but I would say when I first started out, because I started out so young, you would hear, um, oh, she, she has been through enough or she hadn't went through this journey or went through this process or she's not qualified but God is like listen I've chosen a journey for you I've chosen a path for you you don't have to do anything but walk the way that I have prepared for you and I'm going to make sure that you're successful and maybe I want to break protocol 
maybe I want to do it in a different way. Maybe I don't want you to go through what others went through, you know, and so I just have to trust the plans of God. And I'm like, listen, you know, he has me here and I understand that he's going to carry me through this and he's going to sustain me in this. Wow. Wow. That is awesome. Now with you being in ministry, you being a singer, um, by the way, you know, I am a, a I, I got on Greenleaf late, so I'm on Netflix binge watching Greenleaf, and I didn't even know that you uh, played on Greenleaf for an episode. <laughs> you were amazing rewriting the song, right? Um, but tell tell me, um, what is it? There are a lot of young people out there who feel like, listen, I got time. You know, it, it, we don't have to do all this Jesus stuff here at such a young age. Ja'Kaylin, you're in your early 20s. And, and I listen to uh, uh, every Saturday morning, I look for you on Facebook Live or Instagram. And your word is so powerful. And one thing that I have to say about you, Ja'Kaylin, is that you are different. You are rare. Mm -hmm. You are not a person who just talks about the Bible to make themselves look puffed up. When you and I were on that call the other day, when I saw you, the Holy Spirit already told me that she's different. She's rare. I actually thought that you were a little bit older than what you were, not because you look or older, but the way that you carry yourself, your mindset is not the typical mindset of a person that is only 23 years old. So tell me, tell, tell the listeners out there, the young people, for those that think that they just have time, that they're just so young that they don't have to do this God stuff, this God thing. You know, one thing I always uh, kept in mind, even, and I used to hear my parents say this a lot, the earlier, the better. Um, and when you start early, you'll be so much further ahead in life. I understand that, you know, because I walked in my purpose and I said yes to God, I'm able to live out, you know, the destiny that God has prepared for me and the things that God has orchestrated for me to, to be able to live out. Um, and so I think it's very important that despite what your age is, where you come from, what lineage or what type of background you have, if greatness is upon you, it's on you. If it's in you, it's in you. It's just all about you making the choice uh, and asking God to bring it out of you. God, what is it that's in me that you've placed on the inside of me that is going to cause me to prosper and thrive in life? And I understand, you know, um, you say, uh, it, it, because people for the longest, they try to, um, the enemy make us feel like because we have God or because we're Christians or we're believers is boring, but the devil is a liar. You know, I understand that having Jesus a part of my journey and my my life in general is, is the best thing that a person could ever do. And Jesus wants us to have good, clean fun, but all at the same time, you know, be very serious about our purpose and our calling. So, you know, that's one thing I always want to encourage people and especially young people that it doesn't matter how old you are. If you start now, you know, I believe that God will use you in a great way. And certain, certain things, by the time, you know, you get older, you would have already accomplished compared to, you know, some others. So, it's right. just all about you following the plans and the will of God for your life. Right, right. What about those people that feel uh, stuck? They're they're comfortable. They want to do what God is calling them to, but at the same token, they say that they want to go to where God is taking them, but they're so stuck. They're so comfortable in their old ways. They're so stuck. They're so comfortable in the crowds that they have that, that they used to hang with. They're so stuck and they're so comfortable with the things that they have been doing. What is your advice to people out there that are listening, that are in that place yeah, of being stuck? You know, a lot of times it could be strongholds. A lot of times because you're so used to that or you've been there for a minute, um, it's hard for you to disconnect. It's hard for you to move from there. But you have to begin to ask God uh, for his strength and everything else, else that you need to break free from that because you have to watch the enemy because the enemy does not want you to pursue what God has for you. To, for you. He does not want want you to succeed. He does not want you to walk in his plans. And so he's going to pull you. He's going to do everything that he can to keep you from that place. 
But, you know, as I stated before, God can grace you with everything that you need to make sure you get up from that place. And sometimes it also helps when you have people in your life that can help push you, people in your life that can pull you out of that place. Um, and sometimes, because we can't do it on our own a lot, but when you can have that person, whether it be a uh, direct contact or through social media, through uh, uh, inspirational messages or however way you have to do it, do what you have to do, but you need that. So in order for you to get out of where you are to pursue what God has for you, because the enemy doesn't want you to, but at the end of the day, it's a choice. You have to say, listen, I choose victory. I choose that my destiny that God has for me. Mm -hmm. And I tell people all the time, the devil doesn't mess with anything that he already has, right? And exactly. So if he knew that, 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 that uh, he already had you, he wouldn't be bothering you. Um, but let's go back to changing your story, the album. Walk us through um, the album and what are some of your favorite songs from the album? So uh, definitely major. I spoke a little bit about that. Um, God used me to release a, a word on the album that, you know, we graduated from our season of average. We graduated from our season of the norm. God is doing beyond that. He's doing exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think he's doing the major. Uh, Connected to You is another one of my favorites. This like song speaks about the covenant. Um, so many times the enemy make us feel that, you know, because we're believing believers that um, God doesn't want us to live a prosperous life. But no, I honestly believe that if if that was so, it would not be in his word. And so with that being said, uh, we have to understand that there are spiritual as well as natural benefits uh, when we're connected to God and is valuing our connection, is valuing the covenant that God has given us and understanding that he pleasures in blessing us. Um, let's see what else. Canaan is another one of my favorites. Um, Canaan got to took me to the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter one, uh, where he had to remind Joshua of the promise that he made the children of Israel, which was to cross them over into the land that he promised, uh, which is called Canaan. Mm -hmm. And God used me to declare over his people, the wilderness, whatever you're in that re represents your wilderness, whether that be sickness, your past, whatever it is, the wilderness is not your promise. God promised you Canaan. In other, in other words, you may have been where you are for a minute, but don't don't get stuck. Don't allow your mind to get complacent. You cannot stop until you access whatever it is that God has declared over your life. Canaan is a mindset. Canaan is whatever God has promised you. It could be your business thriving. It could be your family coming back together again. You don't stop until you access your Canaan. And so those are some of my favorites um, on the album. I, I, it's hard to choose because I love all, all of them, but those are some, some of my favorites in particular. Show, the Jacqueline Carr show? Uh, Winning with Jacqueline Carr, yes. It's a radio show that I have that I launched a few months back. And um, I just, I love different avenues to be able to inspire people, bring them great um, music, inspirational music. And also I have winning moments, winning segments on the show um, where, you know, I take that moment to encourage people. And so, I, especially during this time, I think that any way we can be able to help people, it is very needed. And I'm, I'm blessed to be able to be in position to do that. Well, you are definitely blessing people. And one thing I, I've Thank noticed you. about you is that you're not just blessing the young people. You're blessing people from the baby boomer generation, the generation X. You are blessing people from all walks of life, from all generations. And I think, Ja'Kalen, I don't think I know. It's your spirit. You're humble. You're very, very humble. Mm -hmm. You're rare. You're different. And most importantly, you are anointed. Your parents you. did an amazing job uh, raising you. But I also must say I'm very proud of you because you did the work. You did the work. It's only so far that our parents can take us, right? And so you didn't leave what your parents taught you. And you stand on the word. The way that you sing, the way that you deliver a song, uh, even your presentation, it is evident that you are deep in the word of God. And I am here mm -hmm. for it. Now, let's move to this is going to be your first time voting in a presidential election. Tell me how you feel about that. 
I feel good, you know. Um, this, I mean, it's definitely time, and and I think that is very important that we come together and um, we all stand together for what's right. That we continue to stand as a nation because clearly, you know, our nation is crying out, and so. But it's been it's been an awesome, awesome experience so far, and uh, I highly look forward to it. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about tomorrow, uh, the power of the black woman's vote. And uh, we were honored to be on the same platform. And so tell everybody why they need to watch this on tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time. You definitely have to watch it tomorrow because first of all, we were graced by some amazing anointed women who has so much wisdom, so much counsel, and who's encouraging us. And beyond everything that is going on, I feel like we we had some church, especially you. You preached on it. I just want you to know. Uh, but but uh, it's just an, a beautiful, beautiful broadcast. And I want to invite everybody to watch it because you will be blessed and you will get information as well. You will get a little history as well. There was, uh, there was literally a whole lot that can really bless our lives in many ways. And so that's why you want to watch it. Right. And not only do we have... Ja'Kalen Carr, we have Kiara Sheard, we have Erica Campbell that hosted, we have evangelist Marissa Farrell, and we have Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts that was on our panel. And so we have a wonderful panel with anointed ladies, and so you don't want to miss it. So check it out on the NAACP.org or all NAACP social media outlets, and that is tomorrow, October 25th at um, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And so, Ja'Kalen, with everything that is happening in our nation right now, with police brutality to racial injustices to this voting to women's rights, what is an encouraging word that you can tell to our people out there? Some people have lost their jobs. Some people mm -hmm. have lost loved ones to COVID. Some people have lost their loved ones to police brutality. This is a, a hard time in our nation right now. Yeah. Give our people some encouraging words. Yeah. As I stated before, our nation is, is definitely, sorry, that's my puppy. Our nation is definitely crying out. Um, you know, the interesting thing is, it saddens my heart to see that uh, some things that we're having to deal with now, we should not even it should not even be a factor, but the reality is, is there. But what I love mostly is that when I can look on social media, when I can look around me and I see so many of us who's pulling together to stand for what we believe is right, it blesses my heart. And I want to encourage those who has been doing everything that you can to encourage others to do right. I want to encourage you and I want to release the strength that we need because, listen, we need each other. Um, let's not tear one another down. Let's not allow this stuff to divide us. But let's stand together as a nation. Stand together because we get some amazing and powerful things happening when we're on the same page. Let's continue to push one another, build with one another because we all want the same thing. We all want change. And in order for us to get change, we have to be on the same page. And so I just want to thank everybody for standing together. And my prayer, ultimate prayer, is that the peace of God will be our portion. It doesn't matter what happens what is going on around you? And I honestly believe that the more you're hid in God, the more you see stuff slide right off of you. And so I declare that God will cover you. God will sustain you and your house. And again, his peace will be your portion. I'm praying with you. I'm praying for you because I believe God. Amen. Do you think, you know, a lot of people think that when you walk this journey as a Christian, sometimes some people think that you're not going to mess up. And mm. that's just not possible because <laughs> we are human. I don't care yeah. how saved you are. I don't care how much you read your word, how much you study your word, how much you yeah. pray. The enemy is going to tempt you. Life yeah. is going to come at you, right? You know, somebody told me we're either in three stages in our life. We're either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or getting ready to go into a storm. But the reality is, is that storms are going to come. And I tell people all the time, if you've never been through nothing, the best advice that I can give you is to keep living, right? Mm -hmm. But, Jacqueline, what do you say to people who feel that, look, I do 
doing everything right. I pray. I don't know how many people have sent me mail, have said, look, I pray. I've been doing everything. I've been fasting. And it just seemed like I just can't catch a break. What do you yeah. say to those people? You know, the Bible simply declares that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the good thing I love about that is the Lord will deliver us from out of them all. And one thing we have to recognize is there are things that God would allow us to go through. He's not just putting us through those things. He's putting us in it so he can pull the best out of us and so that he could elevate us into the greatness and the bigger and the better that he has for us. Because guess what? The Lord told me this a couple of years ago. I'm not going to introduce you to a place that you're not ready for. So let me take you through the proper process in order for you to be able to handle where I want to take you to. And so I know it's easier said than done for you to keep the faith, for you to keep pushing, for you to keep fighting. But at the end of the day, that's what we have to do, people of God. We can't allow the enemy to silence our faith. We cannot allow the enemy to silence our mouths. He knows that the more we put God in our atmosphere, the more we put worship in our atmosphere is causing things to turn in the heavenly realms for us and manifestation happens in the earthly realm. With that being said, you got to make sure that you keep your focus. As I stated before, whatever you have to do to keep your faith afloat, do what you have to do, because guess what? This is not it. This is not all what God has promised you. God has more for you, and don't allow what you're in blindside you or make you forget about where you're headed. Hmm. Hmm. Now, I ask all my guests this, because this is Jesus and justice, right? Do you think that Jesus was about justice? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, God is always on the side of the righteous. I say this and I'll say it a million times as if, if I have to. Um, you know, God is just. And so with that being said, he wants to make sure that um, his people are properly taken care of. Nobody deserves to be treated uh, unfairly. No one deserves uh, to be hurt or, you know, uh, uh, persecuted or anything of that nature out of spite. We all deserve to be treated right. And so I do believe that God is a God of justice because he is just himself. Wow, that's that's very powerful. Very, very, very powerful. But outside of everything you have going on, who is Jacqueline Carr? Um, <laughs> I, I mean, well, we know everything that I do, but right. aside from that, I love, I just love to have fun. Um, I love to laugh. Um, I love horseback riding. Um, I have three horses my, of, of my own. I love ATV riding, uh, going on the four wheeler. I love family. I love hanging out with my family and friends and things of that nature. Um, I love watching television when, you know, when I'm not working and doing what, while operating in purpose. Um, I love watching movies. My top three favorite shows are uh, Grey's Anatomy, Martin, and The Golden Girls. I just love having fun uh, aside from what I do every day. Ja'Kaylin, you sound like you uh, three horses, <laughs> AT. Oh, we hang out. We just going to go to the mall. Uh, I, I don't know about the horseback riding, but that sounds, but I'm a country girl too. So yes. uh, that's that's awesome. Three horses, Ja'Kaylin. Wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So you have a great balance. Martin, the Golden Girls, and Grey's Anatomy, right? I thought something yes. was wrong with me because I still watch The Young and the Rest. <laughs> But um, let me ask you this. Um, so what's next for you after this, after you, after changing your story? What's next for you? Yes, yeah, so I am um, working on my cosmetic line, which is Ja'Kaylin Beauty. But there's also something that I'm releasing before I release the cosmetic line. And I will be posting about that um, within the next week or two. Uh, but I'm very excited about it. I've been working on it. And uh, I'm excited to, to be able to tap even more into the entrepreneur side of Ja'Kaylin Carr. And so, again, it's coming soon. So those of you who want to know what it is, continue to follow me on my social media at Ja'Kaylin Carr, J-E-K-A-L-Y-N-C-A-R-R, -R, and look for the blue check mark behind my name. Wow. Now, how can we get changing your story? Tell the listeners out there, I already have mine, but tell the listeners how can they get changing your story, the album. 
Absolutely. And thank you so much for supporting the album. But you can download it on all digital outlets, iTunes, Google Play. If you are one who wants the hard copy, you can go on Amazon.com. Um, yeah, but that's how you get all of the music. And um, many of you have been tagging me in your testimonies and your responses of how the album has been blessing you. So um, continue to tag me. I try my best to see all of them as I possibly can. You guys are really, really blessing me. So thank you again for that. And thank you for those who have already downloaded the album. Well, Ja'Kaylin, you have been blessing us for years. And it's just, you, you are a breath of fresh air. Whatever I can do, um, please let me know. I'm always here to support you. I'm adopting you as my little sister. So it is such a great <laughs> to uh, just see you uh, in this realm. I'm just so proud of you. I want you to pray us out, but I'm going to ask you something because it's my birthday. Can I get a little bit of happy birthday from Ja'Kaylin Carr? And I want you to put Absolutely. the Ja'Kaylin Carr stank on it. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, I got you. <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tiffany. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> hey, I got you, Kaylin. Call this thing happy birthday to me, y'all. <laughs> 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 Kaylin, listen, you take me to church just by singing happy birthday. And that is something uh, I will always remember. Don't forget to check us out tomorrow on the NAACP, uh, Ja'Kaylin and myself. Don't forget to get Changing Your Story. I promise you, Changing Your Story will forever bless your life. Ja'Kaylin, will you pray us out? Okay, we lost her. So uh, we lost her. The call dropped. So we are so happy to have Ja'Kaylin Carr on here. Uh, wasn't she amazing? So please... You heard her talk about changing your story and how you can go to Amazon, you can go to Google Play, um, you can go to Spotify, you can go to iTunes, um, and that's how you can get that. Um, I am just so grateful. And tomorrow, don't forget, October 25th, 2020, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please don't forget to go to the NAACP.org or to the NAACP All Social Media Outlets, and that is the premiere of The Power of the Black Woman, and that is going to be hosted by um, uh, Erica Campbell from Get Up Mornings with Erica Campbell and uh, from Mary Mary. And so again, we have myself, Ja'Kaylin Carr, uh, Erica Campbell, Kiara Sheard, Pastor Marissa Farrell, um, and Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts, and we have Gina Stewart, uh, Dr. Regina Thomas, and others. And thank you so much to Dr. Zena Pierre for everything that you have done and all that you do for orchestrating this. Um, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, you all, for listening in to this show with Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff to my birthday edition. Um, you all have certainly touched my heart in such a mighty way. Um, we are only a few days away from voting, and so I want you to vote like your life depends on it. For you say, well, why? Vote for the about the ones with Medicaid and with Medicare and with disability and veterans. Vote for those children that are in impoverished areas. Vote for those ones who are sick but can't afford health coverage. Vote for those ones who, uh, or who are in foster care. Vote for those ones who are receiving welfare assistance. Vote like your life depends on it. Because this is the most critical election of our lifetime. And so this, the beautiful thing is, is that we live in a democracy. You have a right to choose. I'm not here to tell you who to vote for, but I am here to tell you to vote. And don't just vote on the federal elections, but make sure you vote in your local and state elections because those are just as, as important. And as I tell people all the time, this is not just about what happens in the White House. This is about what happens in your house. And this is how your house can be affected from your judges, from everyone, that, from your mayor, 
mayors, from uh, your sheriffs, from your chief of police, from all of that, from your senators to your representatives, from your city council members, all of that is just important. So make sure you vote and make sure that you check us out on tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, NAACP. Make sure you go and get Ja'Kalen Cars Changing Your Story. Um, this young woman is, is, she's only 23, and I must say to you that if she's just 23, imagine how she's going to be at 33, 43, 53. This is a young lady that has her head on straight. This is a young lady who is anointed and who is going places, and I must say she is truly an awesome gift to the body of Christ. So let me just say to you all, thank you so much for hanging out with me once again with my birthday edition. I'm sorry that we got started a little bit late, but God is still good, and we know that the devil tries, but he gets no glory, right? But I want to say that this past year has been one of the most interesting years of my life. And one thing that I have learned through all of this is that God has shown me who he truly is. And one thing that God has shown me is this, is that God does not want anything or anyone before him. And when God feels that we're putting things and people before him, he has a way of humbling us and getting our attention and reminding us that he is God. So you see, I learned that I cannot and I should not and will never again ever put my faith and my trust in man. I put my faith and my trust in people. So I don't know who I'm talking to on today, but I will tell you it doesn't matter what your situation looks like. It doesn't matter with chaos and confusion around you. God is in control. I promise you, don't worry about how people treat you. Don't worry about what they say about you. Worry about what God says about you. I'll say that again. Don't worry about what people say about you or do to you. You worry only be concerned about what God says about you. I don't know what you're going through, whether it's sickness, whether it's pain, family issues, financial issues, job loss. But I promise you, think about a time in your life where you didn't see any way out, but God delivered you out of it. The same God that delivered you from the hell that you went through is the same God that will deliver you now. So many times we just keep our eyes fixated on the problem, but we don't keep our eyes fixated on God. It goes back to what the Bible declares. It says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So I don't have to see it. I just know that the God that I serve, he knows my name and he knows my address. And another thing, you halt your blessings by the things that come out of your mouth. You halt your blessings by hating on people and being jealous of people. When you see someone else that is being blessed, be happy for them because God has not forgotten your address. He knows your address just how he knows their address. See, we see a lot of people's glory, but we don't know their story. We don't know the tears that they cried. We don't know the prayers that they cried out to God. We don't know the sacrifices that have been made. You just see the evidence. And the thing about it is when you put your mouth on people, you halt your blessings. Deuteronomy says it best. It says that we are blessed in the city and we are blessed in the field. And that speaks to me. And it just clearly says that wherever I go, I'm blessed. If you think that trials and tribulations are not going to come your way, it is. God doesn't care about what your bank account looks like. He doesn't care about what your last name is. He doesn't care about who your mother and your father is. He doesn't care about what neighborhood you live in. God has no respective persons, and there is no one above God. 
See, God will only let us do wrong for so long, but it's only a matter of time before God will humble us. That's why I am intentional with how I treat people. See, how a person treats me is none of my business. It's how I treat people. Because at the end of the day, God is not concerned about me having a PhD. He's not concerned about me being a professor, having a radio show, and all of the other businesses that I am embarking on. God doesn't care about that. He cares about, did you feed me when I was hungry? Did you clothe me when I was naked? Did you help your brother and your sister? And at the end of the day, I just want him to write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And he shakes my hand and says, servant, well done. That's what I'm pressing toward. I'm pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Jesus. And I promise you, I'm at a point in my life that if God doesn't do anything else for me, I have more than enough to be grateful for. See, Tiffany has some stuff with her. I don't always say the right thing. I don't always do the right thing. My actions are contradicting. But through it all, God still loves me in spite of the mess that I am. That's just how wonderful. I was just sitting in my car today and just thinking about, God, you love me in spite of all of the things that I do wrong. In spite of all of the things that I have said, God, you still love me. And you still want to use me? You still want to give me a chance? When I've turned my back on you so many times, when I put you on the shelf at one time and I only called on you when I needed you, but when you gave me what I wanted, I still turned my back on you. When I put other people and other things before you and put you on the back burner and then I had to call on you. When people tried to destroy me, assassinate my character, you were my defense attorney. When I was in the hospital wrecking with pain, God, you healed me and you still use me? You still love me? That's just how beautiful God is. Isn't that amazing? That's, that's love for him to, for God to love me that much. To sacrifice his son to die just for me. When you are in covenant with God, when you are in a close relationship with God, God will put you places that you never even dreamt of. God will open doors for you that nobody can open or close when you're walking in connection with God. And it is only until you surrender to God and say, Lord, have your way. Not my will, but your will be done. Lord, whoever you got to remove out of the way, do it. Whatever you got to do, do it. However you got to shape my world up, Lord, do it because I just want your will to be done for my life. And I'm just so grateful for my birthday. First of all, to be alive. What an honor to be alive because every day that I wake up, that is confirmation that God is not done with me yet. And I just thank God for the blessings that he has blessed me with, for having clothes in my right mind, having clothes on my back and shoes on my feet and shelter. I thank God for the little things because he doesn't have to give it to me. I'm just grateful because God has been good to me. In spite of my wrong, in spite of my foolishness, in spite of my ways, God still loves me. And I am at a point where I will not compromise my walk with God. And my anointing is too powerful to be compromised. And I will not allow nothing or nobody or no situation to compromise my anointing. And you need to remind yourself of that. That your anointing is too powerful to be compromised. And so I have just been full today. This has been, tomorrow is, is my birthday, but I'm celebrating it today with you and for Ja'Kalen to agree to come on. I'm so grateful. Please like and share this and we'll try to have Ja'Kalen back on the show again. And so if this broadcast has been a blessing to you, 
please, you can go to Cash App and uh, pay a dollar sign TMLB. Only if you want to, a dollar, five dollars, just know that I appreciate it. Or you can go to Fishbowl Radio Network and you can go to Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiffany. You can click on PayPal. Please follow me on Facebook at Dr. Tiffany M. Lloyd. Or you can follow me and follow me on Instagram at Tiffany.M.Lloyd. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And I will see you next week. I am Dr. Tiffany Lloyd signing out on Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff. May God bless you. It's my pleasure.